you know, everything they show us is just a big illusion. It's, it's a big game. It's a toy. They're selling us a product. They're like um, George Lucas. He's, he's uh, merchandising his movies in their merchandising space. Um, so two things. May, number one, I want to focus on the melting point of aluminum and the fact that these rockets are all made of aluminum, guys. I don't know how we can expect these rockets to make it to space when aluminum has a melting point of a, like 1,200 degrees, and yet these rockets are going fast, and they're at about the same altitude as a spy plane, which at a slower speed can heat up to 1,100 degrees, which is very strange. I mean, it's, that's about the melting point of aluminum. So, um, you know, if we take a look at this footage, this is Apollo 11 here. It's getting up to over what the spy plane travels at. It's the exact same altitude, so that should be 1,100 degrees and climbing fast. I mean, heat is a big problem for the S was for the SR-71. Uh, that, that sucker would leak fuel. It would expand by inches on each side, and it was made of solid titanium, 95% titanium. So they weren't messing around. They realized the dangers. I mean, it's just massive heat the higher and faster you go. And then now they're trying to replace this SR-71, the newest spy plane, and they're trying to figure out how they can withstand temperatures of 2,000 degrees. Well, just ask the NASA guys, because their aluminum rockets you know, would heat up more than that if we believe the speeds they show us during their rocket launches. There's no way. Um, and this information is not easy to come by. They don't advertise the fact that their rockets are made of aluminum. Because obviously, if they put that out there all the time, people would start to question, how can NASA fly through you know, that layer of the atmosphere at speeds that are you know, much faster than the spy plane, yet they don't melt? So, what's the deal, NASA? Again, NASA magically defies what we can observe on the ground in the real world. Okay, moving on, the next curious aspect of these rocket launches that I would like to discuss is the trajectory that rockets take. All rockets take the same trajectory, even the shuttle. And you'll notice after one minute, they start to make the parabolic arc. And then by two minutes, every single rocket launch, shuttle launch, is flying horizontal. They have leveled out at two minutes, every single one, and I have watched hundreds. Now, they claim that they are leveling out and they're magically just flying off into space because of the curvature of the Earth. The problem is, there is not enough curvature for that to be true, for that to be possible. So, NASA and scientists love to claim that the Earth is so big that that's why we can't ever observe curvature on our own. Yet, when they need the curvature to blast their spaceships into space, all of a sudden there's tons of curvature and they have no trouble just flying off into space, but um, as we shall see, that's not possible. Um, I'll show you the rest of the Apollo 11 rocket launch, which took us to the moon. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then I will show you the Delta IV heavy rocket. Same thing. I mean, it's pretty obvious, and it's, it's kind of sad. Here we go. Stand by for Mode 1, Charlie. Mark, Mode 1, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston. You are go for staging. Uh, you might want to aim that rocket towards space because you are you have leveled out and you are nowhere near low Earth orbit. Uh, in fact, from Cape Canaveral, you've only gained, I think, 250 feet in, in curvature. That is not enough to throw you into space. This is ridiculous. Fast forward to the Delta IV heavy lift rocket, and it's the same thing. One minute, start to go parabolic. Two minutes, they level out horizontal. But there's not enough curvature to send them into space. It's not going to happen. NASA has simply branded space travel. This is their brand, their franchise. It's a script, and they're sticking to it. 15. Igniter's armed. Rofi ignition. This is Delta Mission Control at T-minus 10. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And the RS-68A engines roar to life and lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy, carrying the NRO L-15 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. 
NRO systems continue to ensure vigilance from above. Vigilance from above. That is funny. And this is a horrible spectacle. Passing 44 seconds into the flight, altitude 1.8 nautical miles, velocity 14,072 feet per second, downrange distance, a little less than a half a nautical mile. Coming up on the one minute mark. Mark, one minute into the flight. Still looking good. Good chamber pressure in the port and starboard boosters in the full power mode, and a good chamber pressure in the core in the partial thrust mode. Passing one minute, 12 seconds into the flight. Hey, where are you going? Space is the other way, man. One minute, 23 seconds, passing Mach 1, vehicle going transonic, also passing Max 2, maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Passing one minute, 30 seconds. Altitude now passing 7.8 nautical miles, velocity 22,064 feet per second, downrange distance 2.2 nautical miles. Two miles downrange, the curvature is only 32 inches. That is nothing. You one need to go straight up, in, NASA, if you want to get to space. Boosters, passing one minute, 50 seconds. Still looking good. I can't believe we bought this crap for so many years. It's really amazing. Lines will be used for ACS propellant or attitude control system propellant during second stage flight. Two minutes, 12 seconds in. Altitude now passing 16.4 nautical miles. Velocity 4,008 feet per second. Downrange distance 12.8 nautical miles. I don't miles. know where that's going, but that's not going to space. Two minutes, 25 seconds in. Still looking good. Good chamber pressure on the port and core and starboard boosters. Good full power modes in the port and starboard boosters. Good partial thrust in the core. The scale of this propaganda is mind-blowing. I mean, holy in. moly. The Delta IV vehicle now only weighs one half of what it did at launch. The weight is decreasing by 4,885 pounds per second. Passing two minutes, 50 seconds. At the three-minute mark, our altitude is 27.6 nautical miles, velocity 7,173 feet per second. Downrange distance, 45 nautical miles. Still, they are nowhere near space. They would have to angle that sucker completely vertical and shoot up straight if they had any hope of arriving at so-called space. Um, what they do is they will cut to their funny little cartoon here shortly, just like every other launch. Never do you get a full, unedited, uncut version of a rocket launch going into space. I'm going to fast forward this so we can get to the good part. The other curious thing is that I can see these rocket launches with the naked eye from the beach, the you know, two and a half, three minutes boosters. when they claim they're about in space, I can still see it. Albeit small, you can still see it, and you'll have trouble seeing a high-flying plane from far away, so it doesn't add up. We'll be in uh, this mode for about another minute and a half until the end of first stage flight. Whoa, what was that? Everything minutes, magically changed into a cartoon. Um, this is what you get, guys. This is what you get for all that Getting tax that money. You get a cartoon. The, the whole rest now. of the mission here is a cartoon. Uh, the European One ones are even step. funnier. But, um, whoa, stage. that was cool. Awesome. Inward. Very realistic Ned cartoon. Uh, maybe it'll give us a replay. Oh, we got jets going off. This is so cool. This is much is easier than just mounting a camera ignition onto ignition on the, the rocket. Stage. This is 2015, and this footage, stage. I think, was 2014 or 2009. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. They Good never change. Burn. We got telemetry data up here. How awesome. Whoa. Six minutes, More jets firing and steering all of a sudden. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
But I mean, how hard would it be to just mount a camera onto the rocket? They do it once in a while, and they'll show you like half the the launch, and they'll switch cameras. Usually get a little cartoon, but I mean, come on, this is 2015, and you can't do better than this. We have like Eagle Cam. Whoa, awesome! That was cool. Uh, we have cameras that'll watch like bird nests, 24/7 live feed of a bird nest. This is and this is what NASA Control gives us. Six uh, minutes, just, just pathetic. Seconds into the mission. And we've just seen the successful liftoff of the NRO L-15 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Liftoff occurred at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time.